How should you address? An alligator in a vest. Investigator. Hey guys, what's up? JD from JD Tech TV here and welcome to episode four of my monthly Q&A series, Ask JD Tech TV. Technically, I didn't do one last month because, you know, things like honeymoon, traveling, these things kind of tend to get in the way, but I'm here now. Plus, this is a very special episode because this is my 100th video that I've uploaded to my channel. Actually, technically it's my 101st, but there's an old like live stream that I did a long time ago for a giveaway that I don't really count, so I'm calling this the 100th. But in these Q&A series, I ask you to send me some of your questions either on Twitter or YouTube, and it could be about tech or it could be about anything at all, and I'm here to answer them for you. So. Let's get into it. Uh, Jeff from El Jefe Reviews on Twitter asks, would you rather know the history of every object you touched or be able to talk to animals? Man, heavy hitter question, Jeff, well done. Well, initially getting to know everything about every single thing that you touch, it, it sounds pretty appealing, but it, it makes me think of that whole Midas touch fable. And for those of you who don't remember this story back from your humanities classes, this is the tragic Greek mythology story of Midas, uh, King Midas, who was granted the ability to turn anything that he touched into gold and all was going really well until he went to go and hug his daughter, turned his daughter into gold, hence the tragedy. And I think the same thing sort of applies here. Learning everything about anything that you touch would be pretty awesome at first until you go into a public bathroom and maybe like flush the toilet. That would be pretty horrific. So my answer is obviously talking to animals. I would definitely pick that. I think it'd be cool to talk to my dog. I, I've had her for 12 years. She's pretty adorable. And I feel like I've been doing all the talking for this entire time. I'd, I'd like to give her a shot to say something. Two Minute Tech says, love the photos from your trip to Europe. Thank you very much. Uh, what is the next place on the travel bucket list and why? Uh, likely what he's talking about are these photos from my what's in my tech bag video. It's where I highlighted some of the tech that I took with me overseas. If you want to check out the full video, I'll go ahead and place the link in the description down below. It's got some pretty great stuff in there. I highly recommend that you check it out. Uh, but my wife and I are trying to make this a yearly thing to where we travel to some place once a year, if not more, if we can. And it's just trying to see the world one piece at a time. But the places that we've been talking about going are either Greece, Ireland, or the Canary Islands. Uh, but, but the list is pretty long. Scott Sadler on Twitter asks, is there one big company you'd like to work with? Who is it and why? Uh, well, yeah, and, and I'm not just saying this because the WWDC was yesterday, but definitely Apple. I just always liked their stuff, and with the Worldwide Developers Conference happening yesterday, where they announced some pretty positive upgrades for things like iOS 12, with more augmented reality incorporation and partnerships with Pixar, Adobe, and Lego leading the way, it, it's pretty huge, but I'll get more into that augmented reality stuff here in just a moment. The new group FaceTime feature where you can have up to 32 FaceTimes going on at the same time with auto resizing, depending on who's talking, as well as the Memoji stuff they featured all really impressed me. Siri didn't get the overhaul that I was looking for, still 100% on team Google Assistant on that one. The Mac OS had some pretty solid upgrades too, especially that dark mode feature and the dynamic desktop where it'll change from day to night depending on the time of day it is. That's, that's actually pretty dope. They also talked about some Apple Watch OS upgrades and the most notably was the walkie-talkie feature to where you can treat the Apple Watch just like a walkie-talkie as long as the other person accepts the invite, of course. But you just press a button and they can instantly hear what you're saying. It's kind of a feature that no one was really asking for. In certain applications, I think it could be pretty cool. But I think in most cases, I think it'll be like the worst version of your parents walking in on you and a significant other um, holding hands. It could be pretty bad. So maybe don't accept the connection from your mom. I, just saying. But overall, despite some of the weird things and some of the issues that I have with Apple, I, I think overall it would be a really great company to work with. I hear amazing things about it and it would be an absolute honor to, to get something like this early for review as well as some behind the scenes sneak peeks. Oh, also dbrand would be a pretty cool company to work with. Absolutely, you know, love their stuff. I, I kind of got it everywhere. So, you know, call me. Oh, Jason Ellis from Unboxed. He has a really great YouTube news and reviews channel, 100% worth checking out. I'll place that link in the description down below. He asks, who is making something awesome that we should be paying more attention to? Could be cool smartphones, smart accessories, phenomenal games, anything. Uh, the best answer that I can come up with is augmented reality. It just gets more ingrained in our lives as each day passes. And I think inevitably, 
It's just gonna be the next big thing that comes along that we actually take for granted. Now, I don't say that specifically in a negative way. I mean just more like, you know, like things like wireless signals, cell phone signals, the internet, Bluetooth, wireless charging. These things are so heavily ingrained in our daily lives, which all of those things would completely blow somebody's mind 50 years ago, by the way. If we don't have any of those things on at any given moment, we feel like we're in the stone age. And I think that AR is just the next one of those things that we take for granted every day. That's an absolutely unbelievable technology that we just eventually don't notice anymore. I really think that it's gonna be incorporated in pretty much everything. And people like us who were like heavily ingrained in the tech community, we know about augmented reality. We know that it's a big thing, but I think for even people like us, we have absolutely no idea all the possible applications and all the positive applications that it can have in our daily lives moving forward. And I'm really excited to see what it is. Uh, Aaron Matthew Kaiser on Twitter asks, how did you and Victoria meet? Was it love at first sight? Uh, this is a pretty common question that I get pretty often and I thought I would answer it here. Uh, Victoria is my beautiful wife for those of you who don't know her name. She's been in some videos uh, from time to time on my channel and I definitely plan on having her in more. She did a fantastic job. But we've actually known each other in some capacity for most of our lives. We went to elementary, middle, and high school together. Uh, we've even worked together at the same restaurant in high school for a short period of time. Uh, but we didn't really hang out with each other really all that much growing up. Uh, we've lost contact pretty much all throughout my 20s and I take these little self vacations down to Orlando every so often just because I like theme parks and whenever I went back down there I was trying to find people that I knew lived in Orlando just so I can catch up with some old friends. Uh, planned on meeting a whole bunch of people. Over the course of the time that I was planning it, pretty much everybody bailed out except for Victoria. So she and I met at Disney and uh, we haven't stopped talking since and haven't stopped loving each other since that moment. But it wasn't specifically love at first sight since we've known each other for the majority of our lives, but that time that we met up at Disney, it was definitely love at first sight since then. Mayank Badhand on Twitter, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name, uh, he asks, uh, what are your recording rituals? Uh, I don't know if I would specifically call this a ritual, but I tend to make myself a cup of espresso at the house before I get on camera. Uh, caffeine doesn't necessarily amp me up as much as most people does. It, if I have a quadruple espresso shot, sure, I'm gonna be really excited about everything that I'm talking about, but it more just streamlines my thoughts. Uh, by default, my brain tends to be a little scattered since I have a lot going on up there, pretty much at all times. So I'm not a terribly ritualistic person, but maybe I can go over what my mindset is like whenever I'm making my videos. Uh, maybe that'll be more helpful since my answer to your original question was so terrible. I, I tackled this whole YouTube thing with absolute intent and relentless hunger to improve. Every sentence I say, everything that I'm talking about whenever I'm highlighting a product, every shot that I set up for A-roll, for B-roll, every cut in the edit and even the musical choice, the whole thing is designed to relay a specific emotion in the viewer whenever they're watching one of my videos. Now, of course, I don't always make the right decisions. I don't always catch the mistakes that I make in my videos. I still make those. But keep in mind, I've only been doing this for a year and a half. There's so much room to grow up. There's so much room to learn so much about this crap that I just don't know yet. And you need to be humble enough to accept that reality. Now, I know that my content is not amongst the greats in the content creator realm yet, uh, yet, but I do know that I wake up earlier than those who are better than me and I tend to work harder than those around me. It's that whole dress for the job you want, not the job that you have thing, right? And that, that quote isn't specifically talking about the clothes that you wear. I mean, that does definitely help, but it's more talking about your actions, your attitude, your mindset, and most importantly, your confidence whenever you're tackling a specific issue or a specific job. And it's tough finding that balance because you never wanna to be too cocky in your work. You just wanna be confident that the next thing that you do will always be better than the last project that you completed. Now I say that because maybe the skills that you're developing on this platform will lead you to some pretty incredible doors that weren't open to you before. And you wanna make sure that when those doors do open, no matter how scary it is, you always step through them, especially if the people on the other side of that door are so much better than you are. I've always found that it's always a good idea to make sure that you are in a position or in a room to where everyone around you is better than you in some capacity. You never ever wanna be the smartest person in the room. You're never growing whenever you're doing that. And, and it's also humbling 
And that's a very important lesson that I think everybody should learn. Because you can only be the inspiration for so long. You need other people to be around you who will challenge you, who will inspire you, who will level you up. Because without that, you're not growing as a person or as a creative. Yikes, this has definitely turned into one of those like self-help things. I, I apologize about that. Uh, I think I'll move on, but ho hopefully that was helpful, so hopefully. Uh, Shireen on Twitter asks, what is your favorite piece of tech from your childhood? Oh, that would definitely have to be Kinex. I absolutely loved Legos as a kid, but they were really expensive, even back in the 90s. But Kinex was sort of like the cheaper yet more creative cousin to Legos. It was more about creating these wireframe looking structures you could see through instead of a more solid Lego build. But I always felt like there was more freedom with Kinex to make exactly what was in my head. I actually wanted to be an architect for the vast majority of my life and, and building these massive buildings, these cars, these like motorized structures like a motorized Ferris wheel and roller coasters, that's probably where those ideas came from. So, man. I haven't thought about Kinex in a really long time. All right, last one. Uh, Get Good Reviews on Twitter asks, if you could know the absolute truth to one question, what would you ask? Uh, that's an easy one. The answer to life, the universe, and everything is, of course, 42. But the absolute truth that I would want to know is what is the question to life, the universe, and everything? And if you know what I'm referencing, if you're cool enough to know what that is, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. Or you can just let me know what your general thoughts on the WWDC were this year. I'm interested to hear it. Also, if you haven't already, that subscribe button is down there as well. Make sure you hit that and turn on the notifications so you don't miss the next video. Well, that's it. Just make sure that you follow me on Twitter if you want to have your questions answered on a video here, or I'll answer them on Twitter for you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you soon.